Hey book lovers, or should I say lovers of romance books, my name is Jalissa, a fellow reader and romance enthusiast, ready to give you more than just a synopsis. Last week, we talked all about Sarah J. Mass and a fan favorite book of hers, A Court of Thorns and Roses, otherwise known as Akatar. This week, we're going to take a step back from mainstream authors and talk about an author and book that aren't as known as they should be. This episode, we're going to be discussing Raven Kennedy and the first book in her Plated Prisoner series called Guild. This episode will not contain spoilers, but will give you general information about the plot and the characters. I just want to start by saying there isn't much about Raven Kennedy's bio. It seems she's private, and even on her website, there isn't much information about her personal life or her writing journey. However, from what I do know, she is an indie author born and raised in California. She's been writing short stories for fun, and she's been writing, quote-unquote, since forever. She transitioned into writing seriously in 2014 and has been a full-time writer ever since. Raven loves to write in genres of contemporary romance, fantasy, paranormal, dark romance, and rom-coms. Even if Raven Kennedy isn't a mainstream author, and we don't know a lot about her, she isn't a small or amateur writer by any means. Her writing has always been empowering and creative and strong, but her writing and books aren't as popular, and it has a lot to do with the business part of writing. Before we get into the episode, I want to bring awareness to a major misconception about self-published authors in the writing community. Sadly, if you're an indie author, your writing is considered bad, and you are looked down upon by publishers and a lot of readers. People often say that indie authors are stay-at-home moms or individuals with a lot of downtime, but this isn't true. And it's rather insulting to those who do something they love but are being burned by the process. Being a writer can be easy, but being a published author is difficult, and the process that people go through can be strenuous. Currently, there are around 54,000 authors who are signed with agents and big-name publishers. That is not a big number at all. Just like any other career that is on the artistic, artistic side, there's a system in which many writers don't become authors due to expenses and rejection. Thankfully, Companies like Amazon, Apple, and even Barnes & Noble have come up with an easy way for self-published authors to be able to promote, find, and sell their books with little cost and maintenance. So now, writers can do what they love without having to find an agent or a publisher on their own. Raven Kennedy is a perfect example of this. She chose to take the traditional way to publish her books, which is to find an agent and and they will guide you to a publisher that will give you a reasonable, fair contract and pay. But finding an agent was hard for Raven Kennedy. She didn't have connections. She didn't know anyone in the writing business or author community. She had no clue what she was doing or where to begin. She said in an interview last year that she felt like she was feeling her way in the dark. She spent three whole years trying to find an agent, and it never happened. Even though she did make many mistakes, she learned a lot along the way and figured out how to be an author on her own. So Raven Kennedy decided to become an independently published author, also known as indie author and self-published author. All three names mean the same thing. Raven was one of those successful cases of self-publishing. A big part of her popularity is dedicated to social media and her marketing. Because of social media, self-published books are being normalized and popularized. There are so many indie authors, including Raven Kennedy, who have become famous from social media and are selling millions of copies of their books through self-publishing companies. If you read any of Raven Kennedy's books without knowing she was a self-published author, you would not be able to sell. She self-published through Amazon. All her books have been published through Amazon services. Raven has a total of 32 books published currently. She has been number one international selling author and has been a highlighted author in many book conventions. Her most popular series are the Cupidity series and the Plated Prisoner series. Raven wrote Cupidity first. It was not only the first book she wrote, but also the first completed series she finished. The Cupidity series and the Plated Prisoner series are both romantic fantasy series. Something interesting about Raven's writing style 
in the Cupidity series is she was a prancer. And she was a prancer for a long time. A prancer is an author who doesn't use an outline or a plot when they write. These type of writers usually write on the fly or write whatever comes to their mind in that instance. Raven was a pantser for all her previous books, besides the one we are talking about today. Guild is the first book in the Plated Prisoner series. Raven admitting to being a plotter for this book, since it's one of her more complex books and series with world building, character dynamics, and an intricate plot points. It took Raven around a year and three months to complete the book Guild while completing other projects as well. It was published October 6, 2020 and runs about 402 pages. Before I get into what lays on the outside and inside of the book, I will say Guild is for a mature audience. That being said, Guild is an adult fantasy romance series. It has explicit themes and content and language in it. In the first chapter, if you ever read it, you're going to be really shocked with what is happening because it throws you in right away. So reader discretion is advised. Starting with the cover of Guild and the series, there are three renditions as far as designs released. The first rendition was discontinued because Raven Kennedy decided she needed to change it for marketing reasons. She said in an interview that she felt deep down there needed to be more simplicity to the cover, which ended up being a good decision on her part. The two other renditions are out now and can be purchased. The first set are soft covers, which have a black background and gold cage and gold bird. Then the hard covers that are white background with a gold cage and gold bird. They sound the same because genuinely they are, but if you look at them as a set, they are different in some ways. When you look at the books all together, you notice the movement of the bird in correlation with the cage. It is a metaphor that if you read the book, you will understand. Both sets are beautiful, and there is no information about who created the covers, so I am assuming Raven designed them herself since she is self-published. So, what does the title stand for? The name of her first book in the series is Guild, spelled G-I-L-D. If you don't know what the word means, then you might shy away from reading the book. In the dictionary, guild means to overlay with or as if with a thin layering of gold. Now, there are five books total in the Plated Prisoner series, the first being guild, and then the rest, na rest of the names go glint, gleam, glow, and gold. Do you see a trend? If you don't, let me explain further. The Plated Prisoner series is a King Midas retelling. If you haven't heard about it, King Midas is an old Greek myth about greed and true happiness. So the myth talks about a king named Midas who wants to have unlimited wealth. He desires nothing besides being rich, and that is all he could think about. He makes a wish to a god to claim a large fortune. The god decides to grant Midas his wish and gives him the power to turn anything he touches to gold. Midas's power overwhelms him as he turns everything he owns, eats, drinks to gold, and he even turns his beloved daughter to gold. He then begs the gods to take the gift away and return everything he turned to gold back to its natural state. The god instructs King Midas to wash his hands in an enchanted river and tells him to share the wealth that he has with this kingdom, which he does. So just know. The myth of King Midas is not a replica to the series. Guild is loosely based on this myth, meaning there are concepts that you can identify as being the same, but the book contains originality and slight differences. To clarify even more, I'm going to jump into the characters before I speak on the plot so there won't be any confusion or spoilers. We're not going to start with the main character. We're going to start with uh, King Midas, since you already know he's going to be in the book. King Tyndall Midas is the ruler of Hybel, one out of the six kingdoms in the book. Unlike the myth, Midas can control his powers. He can touch anything and choose whether or not to turn it into gold and turn people to gold without killing them. He is described as being blonde, blue-eyed, tall, and attractive. 
He's married to Queen Melina, who is also not the main character in the book. You learn right away that King Midas is cruel, manipulative, and extremely clever. Although, like the myth, King Midas's kingdom is poor and starving, while King Midas is extremely rich. Raven Kennedy said in an interview that King Midas is a walking red flag, and I agree. Queen Melina is a secondary main character. She's described as platinum blonde, blue-eyed, thin, and elegant. Her crown comes from inheritance, whereas King Midas married Queen Melina to obtain the throne. She shares the same personality traits as King Midas. She's also very cunning and smart and manipulative. She can be attention-seeking, for good reason, I think. Her powers are the ability to manipulate ice, snow, and wind, and she hates the main character, which you learn early on. The next character is named Digby. He is the main character's personal guard and friend. He protects her with his life and has known her the whole time she's been living in the castle. The main character described Digby as quiet and stoic, even though Digby isn't much of a talker in the first book, he's important to the plot line. He's a character to pay attention to. He's the father figure, most importantly to me. So I thought I would talk about him as an honorable mention. Before I talk about the main character, I want to give you some insight on the kingdom and the setting. So Guild is based in medieval time, um, like the last fantasy book I talked about. Highbell is going to be the Sixth Kingdom of the Six Kingdoms of Oria. All kingdoms are on separate landmasses, and they have their own names besides being numbered, but you will learn more about that other kingdoms in future books. The Highbell people are starving, poor, and distraught, like I said before, but not only because King Midas is greedy, but I consider the weather as an attribution as well. It's freezing cold. There's snow all the time, no season with sun, no crops can grow, and people can't travel to other kingdoms because the weather is so bad. And all of this has to do with Queen Melina's ancestry. All her family before her has these winter powers, and they've manifested into the kingdom physically. Another thing is the High Build Castle, it is completely made of gold, if you haven't already guessed. So just paint a mental picture of an icy wasteland with a giant gold castle stuck into the side of a mountain. I'm also going to comment that there is a magic system in this book, but I would recommend you read. I'm not going to explain it because it gives too much spoilers away. Now to talk about the main character in the book. Guild is told in first person present tense from the main character's point of view. The main character's name is Arin. She is around 25 years old, although it's not specifically stated. She's originally from the Fourth Kingdom called Brackhill. Arryn lost her parents at a young age, and as you move through the books, you will learn, you will read flashbacks to tie in her youth to her adulthood. You learn that she's raised herself and never had a trusted guardian or adult figure. So when she meets King Midas one day in her adulthood, he becomes someone she trusts, and she even falls in love with him. She becomes a part of King Midas's court, lives in the castle, and is very close to King Midas. Too close, some would say, and for a reason that makes up the storyline for the first book. Arryn is so important to King Midas because he turned her into gold. The only person that he ever turned to gold was her. She's a regular person, but with gold skin. Hair, nails, every feature she has is gold. But I consider her being gold as more human humanistic than what it sounds like. Her hair is described as a tanner hue, but it sparkles with gold. Her hair is shiny gold color. And her eyes are hazel with gold iridescent. King Midas keeps Orin right under lock and key because he believes she is his most valuable possession. When I say lock and key, I mean actual lock and key. She's kept in a gilded cage hidden away in the castle. She's not allowed to interact with others unless King Midas gives her permission. She can't leave the castle. She must have a guard with her at all times. And sadly, Orin doesn't see any immortality in this. 
This mostly relates to her mistrust in the world. She likes being hidden away in her own thoughts and enjoys the luxuries and safeties of the castle. So she goes along with Midas's manipulation and gatekeeping. She always sees the bright side and justifies his actions. Their relation, the real relationship is just very toxic. To the other characters in the book, Arin is a possession. She belongs to the king and she's known as the king's golden saddle or his golden pet. Since she is gold, people often don't believe that she's real. Some assume that gold is fake and for theatrics. Some think she's an abomination. Then there are those who believe her value is worth taking advantage of. That being said, let's move forward to the plot. Arin is considered fiable. She's gold, so it's hard not to notice her. Another king from the Fifth Kingdom, named King Falk, comes to talk about trade with King Midas. Everyone knows about Midas's gold-touched woman, and King Folk wants to meet Arryn. He doesn't usually, but King Midas allows it because he wants the trade deal to go his way. During the meeting, something goes terribly wrong, and to defend Arryn, Digby kills King Folk. This changes the whole course of the story and creates all sorts of problems. I would say this is the turning point, but not the climax. Midas sees this as a good opportunity and decides he's going to take over the other kingdom of the deceased king. King Midas orders Arryn to be transported to the fifth kingdom after Midas gets there safely. The next part of the book is about Arryn's and Digby's travel to the other kingdom. Their traveling isn't smooth and more terrible things arise, leading to an unexpected event and shocking cliffhanger. I held back a lot of information as well as other characters in the first book that make an impression. I think if I go into more detail or talk about some of the other characters, I will be revealing too much and I really don't want to do that. Another thing I will add, if you want romance, this first book does not have a lot of it. The book like the one the, the one I talked about last week is preparing you for the whole series. It gives you a lot of background and information on the characters before it throws you into the romantic part of it. But I think that is the best in this case because it makes the love story part stronger and more believable. I will admit, Guild is an acquired taste. I love the entire series despite the criticism this book has had. It's gotten a lot of first and dones, meaning... People will pick up the first book, read it, and not read any further into the series than that. There is also the fact that at some point, Raven Kennedy even received backlash from other authors and publishers. They claimed she couldn't write a successful King Midas retelling, which to me, she proved them wrong. I just want to reiterate that this book is an adult dark fantasy romance book. It is going to contain explicit scenes, language, and content, so reader discretion is advised. If you are sensitive to any of those topics, I would not read this book. It's unavoidable, and there are no ways around it because the author makes it very obvious. I want to close out this episode by giving you a quote from the book. There are plenty of other great quotes in the book but I'm going to read to you two quotes that capture the ideas of the first book perfectly. The first one goes, We are all actors. We're all on pedestals with a spotlight shining on us, playing whatever part we need in order to make it through the day in order to help ourselves sleep at night. And my favorite, a cage is a cage no matter how gilded. That concludes this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed hearing about Raven Kennedy's book called Guild, the first book in her Plated Prisoner series. You should definitely check it out and make sure to support self-published authors and indie authors, Raven Kennedy included. Please join me next week as I will talk about a book that blew up overnight with popularity, both in bookstores and on social media. It combines the Hunger Games, romance, and vampires all into one. Bye book lovers, or should I say lovers of romance books. My name is Jalissa, and that was the Paperback Podcast.